November 15th, 2009. Uh, we have uh, six members present and we have a quorum. And the first item uh, we have on the agenda is to consider and vote on the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Motion, Barbara. Do you have any yes, questions? Motion, I move to accept the minutes. A second. Uh, motion having been made and seconded. Any uh, discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Uh, first uh, order of business is the Cape Cafe site plan. If the uh, applicant could step up to the podium, introduce themselves, make the presentation, the board will consider it. Thank you. I want to touch whoever's laptop this is. Uh, good evening. It's nice to be in front of the board again. I'll just touch on two uh, issues before I sit down and leave you to your business. Um, in the Oh, I'm sorry, James Wagner for the applicant. Um, I reviewed the uh, memorandum circulated by uh, the town planner regarding our application. And I uh, just preliminary note that I, uh, I noted the comments in the town planner's memo regarding another tenant in the plaza, but I won't address that unless the board specifically asked me to. Um, regarding the um, the fire access in the back patio. Um, the town planner indicated that she's visited the site with the fire chief. I don't know why that's doing <laughs> That's a new one on me. Okay. And uh, according to her memo, it appears that the patio can be installed without impeding fire access requirements if, if we meet certain flow through principles. Um, and as suggested by the town planner, in her memo, we we're more than happy to address any issues with the fire chief, and we're content to have the planning board place a condition uh, that the de final design and location of the patio be subject to the approval of the fire chief, as suggested in her memo. Um, so, what we would ask uh, the board to consider, and I think a, a motion, you know, is, is before you, is that the applicant would request that the planning board order the application be approved with that one condition, that being that the patio location and design be subject to approval of the fire chief. Okay. Any yeah. questions? No, but we have to open a public hearing first. <laughs> right. Am I subject to recall the answer? Absolutely. Okay. Um, but my question to you is, are you done your presentation, your initial presentation? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, well, I think what I'd like to do then is open the public hearing and invite uh, anyone from the public up to the podium. If you could uh, introduce yourself, if you'd like to speak concerning the application of Cape Cafe for a site plan review. Nobody wishes to speak? Going once, going twice, I'll close the public hearing and open up the floor to questions, comments, thoughts, or suggestions from the board. Barbara? Oh. I would, at least from my perspective, I'd like to respond to the, the other establishment. I, I don't really think we have any jurisdiction in terms of that, and that's something for you and the landlord and the other tenant to work out. Yeah. At least that's my feeling. Yeah. We just have to do with the exterior design. But I do have a question. Maureen, you made the comment about the dumpster. Obviously, the new tenants are not responsible for everybody else's dumpsters that are out there without any fencing. But you made the comment under waste about the dumpsters are supposed to be enclosed. Obviously, they never have been back there. Um, and I, I don't see that this tenant has to, is responsible for the other dumpsters in the back. But I, I wasn't um, suggesting in my memo that he was. OK. Um, but it's, you know, this is the board decision. It's just in, in the past, when you've had dumpsters, you usually required screening. I'm not saying you need screening in this location. I'm just alerting you that that's something you've done in the past. Well, from my perspective, that's in back of a building, and it's just been that way. And I guess because it's the rear of the building, it's not really a problem. I don't know if anybody else feels that way or not. I agree. <clears throat> Questions? Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the dumpster, but uh, <laughs> is this going to be your final site plan? Yes, it is. 
Um, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but I've done this a lot. White out and a ruler um, would make a much better permanent record by um, getting rid of the, un the things that aren't there and changing the names. And this makes for a better presentation. And uh, um, again, this, if this is going to be for the permanent record, it would just make for a better plan. And it's something you can do yourself. You don't have to hire a draftsman or anything. OK? Right. So. As I've done so far, essentially. What's that? As I've done so far, essentially. Right, I took yeah. took a public record document and marked it up. But I, I understand your point that I uh, didn't mark it up so to take away the, the names of some of the old establishments. Right. No, you don't have to. But it's just it would clean it up a lot. And uh, um, since I, I'm assuming you're not going to go out and hire a draftsman to do anything on this, then, right? No, I'm not okay. to. It's a cheap and easy way of doing it. Okay. I, I, uh, I'm happy to do that if, if you request me to do so. This is the second. I would request. I think it's uh, 10 years from now, you know, this is going to be a permanent record. I think we should make it more presentable so somebody down the line can read it. And that includes widening out the, uh, the title block and uh, putting in there what... Uh, you know, but what you have in there, what you say is fine. It's just get rid of the other, the old title block information so no, so there's no liability or responsibility on this land surveyor's stamp because you had nothing to do with it. I mean, I think Mr. Tickham's here tonight. I can ask him what his opinion is about that. I, I actually left it in purposely so that he didn't think that I was trying to take credit for his work. And that's no. why I put an asterisk in there. Yeah, no, I understand. I don't know what we've done before, Maureen, but about this kind of plan. If this is an unusual request on my part. This is a little rough. So I'm not out of line by requesting this? OK, all right. So I would like to make that a, when we get to the motions. Sure. I have a question. Actually, I'd, I'd like to ask Maureen this before um, addressing the applicant. The right title and interest issue that Barbara already noted. I'm fully aware that jurisdictionally or in, in terms of our regulatory capabilities, we don't have any power there. But um, the application standards do talk about the right title and interest to the property in order for an application to be filed. Can you give us any perspective on how this issue or whether this issue has been dealt with by planning boards in the past? Um, the board, what you've usually required is either a survey that shows that you own the property, right. or if you don't own the property and you're a renter or a lessee or a purchaser, um, you've accepted a purchase and sale agreement as evidence of right title or interest. Right. Um, if you were a renter, you've accepted any kind of documentation, a letter from the owner saying, yes, I give this person permission to go ahead with this project. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, this applicant has provided that. Right. Um, they've also, I've also had conversations with representatives of the, of the owner saying that they are aware of this difference of an opinion and that their attorney says that um, they are consistent with the restrictions in the lease. I had a very um, passionate discussion with the uh, lawyer for the, uh, the Ocean House Pizza and explained to him that, him that I didn't think that this would be something that the board would be willing to act on. Mm -hmm. But he was adamant that he wanted it brought up, um, that he thought that there was no right because of this conflict in the lease. So, you know, I have not asked our attorney, the town's attorney, for an opinion on this. Um, if you want me to, I can do that. I can tell you, not in this specific example of a lease, but there have been at least, at least one situation I can think of where um, an applicant provided a survey stamped by a registered main surveyor mm -hmm. showing the property line being X, and then an abutter came in with another survey stamped by a registered main surveyor showing the abutting property line to be Y. And the planning board in that instance said, we are not going to decide which is the right one. We feel that the applicant has met our, our minimum standard. And uh, we can approve this with a note to the applicant that you proceed at your own risk. 
I had the same, I, I was thinking it, within the same context when I read over all the materials that we, we've already received information from the um, lessor and the lessee that they've entered into this, that they feel that they have the, uh, the landlord feels he has the right. So yeah. I just was curious. No, and it, uh, I'd like to just make two points on that. One, substantive, and, and that is, um, you know, from the planning board's perspective, my experience both on this board and appearing before other boards is it's a pretty low bar, meaning if, if you've got some claim to it, yeah. lease or P&S. But importantly, I think for this procedure, you know, this is the public hearing. The rubber meets the road here, and we don't even have a letter from the land, you know, from the, the tenant's attorney. I mean, all we have is a conversation. And I think that was noted with the lack of... Sure, I mean, if he were here to make a presentation, maybe we might take it, but my view is, you know, it's, it's too late at this point to consider that as, as anything. So I've already moved way beyond that. Don't even bother. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no need for the applicant to respond because we don't have any claim. It's fine. I'm a lawyer, so I'm inclined to find No, I'm... Uh, well, it's all I can do to hold myself back when I'm not... <laughs> Just like, like when judges say, now it's all it's enough. Yes. Yeah. No, my question was not for you, it was for Maureen, so <coughs> you're absolved. <laughs> Mr. And Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Any other questions? I guess not, but go ahead, Tom. A motion for the board to consider findings of fact. James Wagner, Dr. Samir Haydar, and David Leopold are requesting site plan review for a change of use of an existing space in the Pond Cove Shopping Center located at 327 Ocean House Road to restaurant for the Cape Cafe Wine Bar which requires review under Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Number two, the application includes a rear patio, which is proposed in an area that includes multiple emergency fire exit doors. Number three, the application substantially complies with the standards of Section 19-9-5 Site Plan Regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of James Wagner, Dr. Samir Hadar, and David Leopold for site plan review for a change of use of an existing space in the Pond Cove Shopping Center located at 327 Ocean House Road to a restaurant for the Cape Cafe Wine Bar be approved with the following conditions. One, that the patio location and design be revised to comply with emergency fire exit requirements as determined by the fire chief. And two, that the final site plan be amended to present a more professional appearance such that the final document be clearly readable and acceptable to the town planner. Second. A, mo a motion. Is there a third one? I'm sorry? Is there an additional condition about risk here? Do we want to add some? I, I, don't, I don't see the need for that personally. No. I don't either. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we don't make that finding if someone has a challenge. Um, so motion having been made in, uh, by Tom Dolan, seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed. Motion carries 6 nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next item we have on the agenda is uh, the Berry Subdivision, the estate of Henry Berry III is requesting subdivision review of a four-lot subdivision located at 110 Two Lights Road. If the applicant or his representative can step up to the podium, identify themselves and make their presentation, please. Well, my name is David Titcomb from Titcomb Associates. I'm here representing the Berry Estate, and uh, hopefully I'll get this to work.
Intersection with Two Lights Road. I mean, if I can, maybe. There we go. Um, The total area of the parcel is, is nine acres, and uh, we're proposing four lots. Uh, there is a lot here with the existing house. The existing house is here with a barn, and that lot line extends over to here. And then there's lot two is here, and these lot lines extend back in here and over to here. This, this is a 75-foot wide piece in the rear of that. And then lot three is in here, and lot four is over in here. Uh, there's some site constraints to the property. You'll see this is a wetland in the rear of the property, and there's a pond here in the property, the rear property line straddles the middle of that. And there's also some steep slope areas that extend right along this here in this hatched area here. These are Albert Frick and Associates has found test pits for all of the parcels that have went in here. I believe it's hard for me to see from back here. Um, one right in here and another one over in here in the existing house has an existing system on it and I'll be addressing that in a moment. Uh, there's a couple of other, of other issues here. Hennifer Cove Road is a narrow right-of-way that runs through there and there's some small portions that barely, that actually encroach onto the Barry property uh, by not very much. It's like a foot or two, foot and a half I think was the largest encroachment there was there. There's also a couple of other encroachments onto the property by cross culverts. And again, I can't. There's one that crosses onto lot three. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that's good. Yeah. This is lot three, and there's a culvert that crosses here. And I can get over here. And there's another culvert that crosses in here. Now, one thing, Bob Malley had, um, had talked to us, and we had somebody meet him at the site. There was also an additional culvert that we didn't see when we were out there, and, we did, and it actually crosses approximately in here and comes across the road. Um, and that also encroaches slightly on the property. So in discussions with the town, what the applicant has agreed to do is to give a five foot wide easement over onto a portion of the property to cover the right of way issue and also to grant an easement around the uh, culverts for maintenance purposes. So I'm sure the attorneys will work that out together. So those are the major issues right now. Um, there was an issue of completeness that some very minor issues that we can deal with very easily. Um, one of them was uh, 
monumentation around the lots and that they weren't shown in the legend, that's easily taken care of. Um, we, it was noted that we had form, submitted HHE 200 forms for all the lots, but there was no um, forms shown for the existing septic system. Well, we believe that one exists and we're tracking that down right now. Uh, but that will be taken care of as well. Another real, very minor issue. Um, the, the lots are served by public water and we show the location of the water line. However, we have not shown the size of the water line or the proposed connections to the lots. And again, uh, Fairly trivial item, and, and we can it's just annotation on the plan. And your town engineer um, was satisfied with the overall stormwater approach, but additional construction details were requested. Again, those are minor items, those are generally consist of boilerplate. I assume he's asking for things probably like silt fencing and that uh, ilk. And our engineer can easily provide those as well with our next submission. Um, similar to the water supply, um, we'll be showing how the electricity will be provided to the lots, and, and it, we're proposing that overhead electricity be provided, which is consistent with every other house that's along the road here. Um, and the last item, was the um, donation of the land. They own an additional parcel, which is way down at the other end of the Hannaford Cove Road that is commonly called the Pond Line. And we're, we would like to donate that as part of or all of the um, conservation donation. Uh, there's some as noted in the memo, there's some uh, problems, potential problems with that. And either another item that we, that we plan on working out with the town. Either if it's unacceptable, then the applicant is more than willing to, to pay the fee. Unfortunately, this parcel does not lend itself to a dedication for conservation land. It's just, there's no appropriate place in there, and I've had discussions with staff about that as well, and, and they can do. Uh, where, is, so, where is that piece of land that you're talking about? Is it shown on there? No, no, it's it's well removed from this parcel. Oh, okay. it's all it's all the way at the end of Hannaford oh, Cove Road. Okay. Okay. Oh, down by the water. Right. Access by a private road, I think, right? Well, that's that's the issue. Access. Yeah, questionable. <laughs> but why don't we stay on the agenda? And then, which so if are you done your presentation? Yes. The last thing that I would point out is that these lots are actually. Although they meet the lot size for the ordinance, they're oversized lots for these for this neighborhood. Uh, if you have, let me zoom out again. If you take a look across the street, so we've got a potential house site here, 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 and the existing house. And if you look across the street at the number of houses that are across the street and how tightly they're packed in. This is uh, well in keeping with the neighborhood. So, other than that, I will entertain any questions you may have. Yes. Barbara. Um, <clears throat> could you show us where the driveways are going to be? Well, our plan is to have the driveways enter at points that are not opposite houses on the other side of the road. So potentially there would be a driveway in here and potentially one in here because there's a house here and a house here. And then, and this one obviously needs to come in someplace in here. Do you plan to show them on your final? Um, we could show probably an acceptable driveway entrance range where somebody could put it. Okay. Could do that. Beth? David, is the intention to keep the remaining house on lot one? Yes. It is. Okay. So no further construction is anticipated? 
right now? Not. Not as part of this plan? No. Okay. Maureen, I noticed um, the lot three and lot four, there's a 15 foot setback and there's 30 and 25 feet everywhere else. Is, is that, I, I just don't have the. You mean from, from the RP2 wetland? Yeah, is that acceptable? The ordinance gives the planning board broad discretion in how much of a setback you can require from RP2 wetlands. It explicitly says that you can require one, but it doesn't say what the amount has to be. So the board has varied that. You usually vary it based on how much land the area is available. You've actually gotten very narrow where there's no space. Mm. Um, you've gone as far as 100 feet on very large lots where there's plenty of room for the house. Okay. So you have, some, you have some discretion there. Okay. So it's, it's, we, we've done that before. Mm. Supposed to, it's kind of a little finger of RP2 yeah. there. Right. That, that's also something you might want to look for when you're out on the, the site walk. Yeah. See whether you're comfortable with that, although this time of year I'm not sure we're going to see too much. No, probably not. <laughs> and just to follow up on that, the, the lot three proposed septic looks right. to be eyeballing at 30 feet from the RP2 wetland wet edge. Right there? Not even that far. I'm just scaling it. I think that's where you've done your test pits. That's right. That's right. And it meets acceptable guidelines. Right. I mean, it complies with. And that's, uh, my understanding of that is you just need, you need to show that f to make the lot approved, approvable. But you can locate it somewhere else, assuming it complies with other. Where that existing septic system is? No, that's not existing. That's proposed. Oh, that's proposed. I'm sorry. In other words, if, if you find another spot on the site that is still acceptable, you don't necessarily, but you need to show that you can put a system on it. That's correct. Yeah. So, and you have yeah. shown it. Just to uh, follow up on the driveway issue, if you have the applicant show a driveway on the plan and then someone decides to build their house mm -hmm. in a such a way that the driveway will go someplace else, that's going to require them to come back to you for an amendment. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Mm -hmm. No need to do that then. No need to do that. I just wanted to hear from you where you yeah. plan to have them put. Well, you know, and quite frankly, I mean, it doesn't make... It, cu it cuts both ways. It does. It helps the lot, your lots, to make sure that the folks aren't pulling their cars into your lots. If, if so. I was building a house there, I wouldn't want to put my driveway directly... Right in front, front of somebody else's right. house. Yeah, it, for them and for yourself. <laughs> exactly. So... I'm not worried that's going to be an issue for that okay. reason alone. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, a couple. Um, Maureen, could you explain what the actual uh, cash payment formula would be? Uh, yeah. I think I included in your packet. There's a whole write up. Um, it's there? I didn't yeah. see it. No, I'm, the reason I'm saying it is I'm, I'm not sure I have it in front of me. But the. Here it is, great. So what the town has, and I'd be happy to explain this, is the town has, has a practice going back to the 70s of requiring uh, developers to contribute land as part of their open space requirement. And um, in the mid-90s, you probably are well aware that there were some decisions out of the U.S. Supreme Court that really said these kind of blanket requirements had to be very clearly tied to the impact that a new development would have on a community. At that time, the town took its open space requirement and converted it into an impact fee and continued to do pretty much exactly what it had been doing all along, except now we felt that we had a, a legally defensible way of doing it. So what we, what we do is we keep uh, a running tally of all the open space that the town owns, that the town has easements over, that the land trust owns, and that the land trust has easements over, where we have legal public access. We total that up, we divide it by the total number of households in the town, and we come up with what we call a community standard. And that's so many acres. I think we have here that it's um, 0.297 acres per lot or unit is the standard that we came up with. And then we figure that out into an acre standard. I go to the assessor and ask him 
uh, what's the value of an acre of vacant land in Cape Elizabeth? He gives me a value, and we've calculated this into a fee, which the council periodically adopts. Right now, you are required to donate 12,937 square feet per lot or unit that you create, or um, pay a fee of $4,455. The fee, if and no one has paid a fee before, we almost always can work out a land donation arrangement. Um, but if you pay a fee, it would go into an account that would be designated for the purchase or improvement of open space. And if the town doesn't use that money within a 10-year period, it goes back to the person who paid the fee. And given that there's going to be a dedication or conveyance, whatever the methodology is, of the, of the lot that's close to the, closer down off-site? That's actually you? not decided yet. Yeah, that's something we need to discuss. Exactly. I mean, it's essentially a useless, <laughs> and it's, it, it's meaning it's not a buildable lot, it appears. I mean, and I'm saying this in very general terms because we haven't hashed it out. That's one of the things I think we do need to take up in, to begin tonight and to continue with the public hearing next, uh, next month, assuming we're going to set one, which is what I expect it will do. Um, you know, and discuss what its value is. I mean, because... Frankly, if it's a non-buildable lot or even a lot that's unusable for public purposes, it doesn't have much value. And then we have to offset that against the uh, payment. I, I just wanted to make sure that was noted, if you mm. will. And then my other issue or question, if you will, is with regard to the undergrounding of the utilities. While I acknowledge that most of the, the residents in that nearby community have above-ground utilities, what are the standards for requesting that the utilities be undergrounded? I believe that um, you can ask for a waiver of that. So the board normally gets underground utilities, but if, there, if someone has requested a waiver, you also have often granted waivers. Thank you. Usually the, so, the, the, the underground is when you're constructing essentially a neighborhood. This is pulling off existing, which to me makes it easier to consider rather than putting in new poles down the street. I would respectfully disagree. No, just, uh, <laughs> um, quick question, Maureen. <clears throat> the impact fee, just so this is clear, since they're adding three lots, is it a four lot? It becomes four lots because it, it's a four lot. I count the number of lots in the subdivision and multiply that by four. Okay. Four well, nine. it's just that one lot's already built on, so I wondered. Okay, just so it's clear to everybody that yeah. it's the four lots. Mm -hmm. So, Maureen, those numbers that you stated, are they proposed numbers or are they the actual numbers that would be used? Those um, numbers are like numbers. Update. Yeah, those numbers are the numbers that have been adopted by the town council in the town's fee schedule. And I say periodically updated because if we obtain or we dispose of a large chunk of open space or whenever there's a new census, mm -hmm. uh, we tend to recalculate the number present it to the council and they adopt it into the fee schedule. Okay, so you showed us the calculations of what has been adopted. I, I, by yeah, the town this, if, okay. if you're, that is the standard you operate under right now. Okay. Any other questions? Tom, I, I'm going to ask you to follow up on this because we won't have the benefit of that. But why do you think that, that why would you be inclined to keep underground utilities where it's, they're essentially pulling off existing poles on an existing built street? I mean, essentially, you're just running it underground from the pole down the lot to the house, which certainly helps that house. Right. But part of the reason you want underground utilities in the neighborhood is to keep that risk from flowing to everybody. But I'm yeah. interested in your perspective. Yeah. If you go through my community, mm. half is above ground and half is underground. Oh. And my perspective is anytime you can underground the utilities, particularly at the opportunity to approve the site plan, you should. Sure. I disagree. It is better. But it's one, it's the poles go down the street already. Right. I mean, it's from that pole to the house. And I, I, I see it as significantly extra expense with marginal benefit. That's, but that's. You know, we disagree on that. Well, I like underground utilities first, but I don't like to bake an applicant spend an extraordinary amount of money. I don't know what it costs to put in underground utilities. Jim, it, yeah, okay. It's more expensive than dropping it from an existing pole. Oh, well, obviously, from an existing but, pole. but you know, if it's a question of 500 versus 
2,000, I'd go with the 2,000 and have the utility, but if it's a question of 2,000 versus 25,000, sure. then it's a whole different thing. And, and I understand the benefit of underground utilities too, because if you're building a subdivision and there's definitely an aesthetic reason to do that. However, this is a situation where there's already overhead lines, and the only overhead lines that are really going to be happening are where they come from the pole to the house. There will be no new poles up here at all. Yeah, and I, again, fully appreciate and understand that. But my perspective is you have to start somewhere. And if you have four new houses or three new houses go up and you're going to have lines off of existing poles, you've perpetuated an existing circumstance. At some point in time, I personally would prefer to see all the ground, the lines underground. And it's not purely aesthetic. It is a no, I, issue yeah. and a and safety, safety issue. issue. Um, I mean, that's, that's my, who pays um, for the maintenance for the utility between the pole and the house? Is it well, the, the CMP? No, the, the, the drop is usually the homeowner's responsibility. It is. Yeah. From the pole to the house. Mm -hmm. Down the street. You know, if those were to be replaced or to, were to, you know, be knocked down in a storm, that's CMP's mm -hmm. responsibility. Gotcha. Which, of course, we all pay for. <laughs> that. Yes. Any other questions? Okay, well, what's on for tonight is completeness, and then, uh, on, so what I'd like to do is invite a motion on that issue. Tom, I know you're anxious to have them. Bear with me. I'll do it with it. Here. Uh, motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the estate of Hen Henry Berry III for minor subdivision review of a four lot subdivision on a nine acre lot located at 110 Two Lights Road and Hannaford Cove Road be deemed complete. Second. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Sure, go ahead, Tom. Motion for the board to consider. Can I interrupt? Sure. I'm, I'm going to again request that you not table it until you're done talking about it. Oh, fine. Oh, I thought you was just going to set the public hearing. And so I, you're I know, but it, that. it No, that's fine. It <laughs> I, if I had heard that, I would have raised the same issue, but I thought he was just going to set the public hearing. I'm sorry. No, that's, that's fine. fine. Um, we'll get to that. I, well, the, the first issue, if we're not done talking about some of the substance of the application, is there any other issues that we need to discuss? Any, any items that the applicant is looking for some direction or clarity from us on? Uh, well, I don't know if you do straw votes or not, but uh, I would like to resolve the overhead underground utility. Issue. Well, here's something else. The next thing we're going to consider is sidewalk, and my view is, I've, I've expressed my opinion, but frankly, I, I don't know which way I'm going to vote on that issue until I go out there and take a look okay. at it. That's fair. So, uh, you know, that's, so I can't give you uh, an opinion. I would abstain or whatever if we even did that, but that's a fair request, and if anyone else wants to, I know Tom, Tom is actually off the board next, <laughs> which the applicant is probably... <laughs> Not unhappy about, it. Um, but if Barbara, you have a comment, question. I have a question. Um, we don't have any any elevation lines on here at all, and yet this site is very. Are you talking about contour lines? Deep <coughs> contour lines. Yeah, I mean I see contours, but there are no numbers on them. Oh, oh you're. Right. I have that, but it has no numbers on it. I'm just curious. No numbers that I can see. Oh, there's numbers there. Where are they? They're probably just the reduced scale is probably difficult to read. Barbara, do you want them to produce a, a, a you know, the full, was it 20 by 30? Yeah, we'll do a 24 by 36. I would like to see that in the completed plan after we go out on the sidewalk. Well, before you mean? Or, well, I can't see, we can't see it before. You could get a copy before. Okay, well. If that's what you want, I mean. I, I oh, you could bring them to the walk. I'll bring them to the sidewalk because yeah. this, it doesn't mean a whole lot when you have no numbers. Barbara? 
It, yes. it, it's in the soils legend up top. They showed a three, eight, three to eight percent grade and then an eight to 20 percent grade, but it is very difficult to completely understand that. Well, I'm That's afraid right. I can't convert it. Yeah. I'm not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dates for a site walk. This is a very difficult time of year for that. Yeah, it sure is. How about 1225? <laughs> Midnight? Be the only day Midnight, that'd be great. We'll have a little candlelight vigil out there. Well, I'll bring my sleigh. Okay. Um, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm out this weekend, and the weekend after that is Christmas, and then we have New Year's, which ain't going to happen. Yeah. It's got to be a weekday, is what I'm yeah. Morning? I'm pretty flexible. Depends, yeah. I was thinking someday next week, 7.30. Oh, my God. You're kidding. It's hardly <laughs> light at 7.30. <laughs> Yeah. She does make a good point. It's barely light at 7.30. It's what? It's barely light at 7.30. Well, that I would it's be good. That I would be. light. Yeah, it's light enough, though. Plenty light. Yeah. Jim, Jim Hunt. Buck up. Come he on. Knows. He knows. He's going to come out with a headline. He knows exactly. <laughs> How about the 23rd at 7.30? I can I can't go then. 22nd? 7.30? Can't we make it at least 8 o'clock? <laughs> Revely, revely, all hands heave out. Let's go. <laughs> Either day works for me. I mean, the evenings are just not going to work. No, that's yep. dark. It's that's dark what I mean. Before. Literally, it's within a day or two of the shortest day of the year, but that's the best we can do at this time of year. So it's Monday or Tuesday? It's, fine. it's fine by me. I've got yeah. no classes next week, so it's fine. I, I prefer Monday or Wednesday, but I, I can make Tuesday if that's Tuesday really or Wednesday would I could, be best for me. I've got meetings Monday. So I'm, and, and the town planner can't do Monday. So what, Tuesday, the 22nd? Tuesday that's a yes. Bob and everyone's yes, and Tom's saying, what do I mm -hmm. care? I'm done. Yes. <laughs> Where on the site should we meet? 7.30? Eight o'clock. I would I would say at the driveway. Is that the best place to park at the house? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can we just park on the road? How about just on Hannaford Cove Road? Maybe. Who's the app? So you're there. Can't we meet at eight o'clock? Seven thirty. Please, eight o'clock. No. Can we okay. just park on Hannaford Cove Road? Enough, there should be enough road on the shoulder. Okay. Road okay. On, on Hannaford Cove. Yeah. Okay. We'll be walking now. It should be fine, but we're, um, Maureen and I will talk if it happens to be inclement weather. Watch your emails. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're going to do it that way, yeah. yeah. And we have cells, so. We but we're going to make the call probably, we're going to make the call by 6.30. In the morning? Yeah. No meaning. The weather would be have to pretty bad for us not to I'm go, just trying right? to figure out how to I mean, notify people. It's well, the point is we'll know by then. Yeah. It's it's the forecast is fine, so I'm not worried so much. Okay. But we'll deal with that as it comes. Well, that's right. But I, I'm ha I want to play on the record so that by 6.30 we'll all know whether we're going to be there at 7.30. I can bring it up. <laughs> and that's my call, so that makes it easy. Um, is there anything you want to particularly see at the, I mean, do you want? No, it's a fair question. Board? I, I would like to see, I mean, obviously the site is very important in the, you know, understanding where the wetlands are. They're all over the place. They're, they're in the back, but just yeah. seeing the housing sites and that steep cliff, and I'd also like to see that lot at the end of the road where it well, is. Yeah, we probably will end up down well, there at the end, at the, the, end. At the yeah. end of the walk. And it may take. Look, staked out. They're not the building envelopes are not staked out. No, I'm may, just gonna... may I suggest that you would want to see at least along the road the 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 right and the left side of the building envelope, and you want to see how deep the building, the building envelope, envelope is to the back. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. yeah. And where the culverts are for runoff, stormwater runoff, and the existing so you, culverts. The existing yes. culverts. Yes. And we can stake the front two corners of the building envelope. Great. Please. Maybe tie a flag on a tree in the back part. Yep. I think there's already flags out there, aren't there? I think the back one's probably pretty evident anyway from the slopes, you know. Yeah, I'm expecting we're going to end up at the, at the paved drive for lot one and simply walk once down the length of it. And if people want to probe into each lot, I'll leave that up to them and they can bring their waders. You're not going to lead us? No. no. At least you don't have to deal with bug spray. That's true. Or, or wasps, hornets. Well, we yeah, wasps. See the, the, the steep slope and how that flow is going okay. to be. 
You'll be able to, you can walk back and yeah. see the steep slope, or even if, if you look down here where. How does the land fall? Does it fall backwards or forwards? It falls away from the road. Oh, okay. And if you look right That's here okay. along Hannaford Cove Road, see where the steep slope is there? Yeah. If you want to get a flavor for what those steep slopes okay. are. Okay. But it flows, and what's behind um, the lots? In here? Farm. Yeah. There's a farm back there. Oh, there's a farm? Yes. Okay, so the water's flowing that way. That's right. Towards the farm? Basically, the water's flowing down this way, and it's collecting here in that pond. Okay. Right here, it's yep. collecting this pond, then it continues to drain out through here over towards Two Lights Road. And that's just vacant land, right? Or it's farmland, right? Farmland behind there, yes. And um, are there any wetlands back there, or is that all? You yes, don't know. there are. There are. I would say there probably are. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments, information we want to give to the applicant? Hearing none, I'll invite Mr. Dolan to make a motion. <laughs> motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that the above application be tabled to the January 19, 2010 planning board meeting at which time a public hearing will be held. Motion having been made by Mr. Tom Dolan. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Beth Richardson. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Oh, did you want to? No, no. Just... All in favor of the motion? Opposed. Motion carries 6 nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're done our regular agenda. I do want to publicly thank Mr. Tom Dolan for his years of service. You know, this is his last meeting, and... Uh, I, Tom, I, I did appreciate your service. I, I wish you had stayed longer, and I want to thank you. And I appreciate all your time. Thank you from all you of us. And a good addition. Motions to adjourn. Tom? I'd like to make a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. We're off the record. Thank you. Since this is